Most people in life are looking for how do I make a life worth living and return with having. I have just woken up from a important and well-needed nap after walking around the community quite a lot in my age of life. And when I take my nap, I expect to be sort of left alone. A few minutes after I woke up, a vehicle drove up that was filled with, well, either a Mexican or a person who was Filipino, but I really couldn't tell. She tried to hand me to, I don't know what, in a wrap, in wrappers, and a Coke. Well, I don't drink Coke products very often, and if I do choose to have something like that, I typically, even though my preference is not them, unless it's a Sprite or something, I would typically choose some sort of a Pepsi, only because Pepsi had supported my program. The reason I choose loyalty is because when I was impoverished, driving in my marvelously fully paid for business vehicle, Pepsi supported me. They gave us a few vouchers. That information has been stolen from me in several situations. When I talk about truth, I was surprised that these matronly and grandmotherly people were trying to drive up and feed me. It's sort of a ridiculous use of their funds, if it really was only purchased for me. If it's something they purchased for themselves, and they felt like a little guilty that maybe a homeless person or someone who's living in indigency at the present moment needed some food, then the kindest thing, as I've always said in my ministry, is to drive up and ask someone what they need today. The absolute true kindness of any human being and any minister of any kind, no matter what religion, no matter what faith you are, is to simply ply someone with some cash or a gift card to a store someplace nearby where you see that individual on a semi-regular basis. Some people like to stalk people that they've helped before, and while that's okay, if they don't refer to the individual as if they've met them before in a kind and light, righteous or loving way, the person is not likely to accept again because it feels more like solicitation and harm. You see, the kindness of a stranger's heart is always the kindness of a stranger's heart. We know of the stories from the Bible about the Good Samaritan. And the Good Samaritan, and, and maybe I said that wrong because I'm you know, learning this at five years old, and we don't always remember things in their pronunciation correctly, was the only person of the several people that drove by someone who was like me, someone in poverty, someone who had been beaten up and stolen from, and openly you're expecting that total stranger to reach out to a community that is abusive. I'm afraid that's not going to happen from an educated person. We have marvelous people that like to abuse people, that like to kill items in the road, and openly it's usually done by a marvelous truck. What we know in marketing is what color vehicles are people who are real, people who are sincere, and people who love on people. What we also know from marketing statistics are what houses are safe, what safe, what safe houses are not safe, and why. And what I mean by that is that if you're lost in a community, and you're driving, and you're running out of gas, and you need some help, there's a particular type of house to avoid, and a particular type of house you can seek help at. There's also the same when it comes to vehicles. There are particular types of vehicles that have good quality people in it, that are not opposed to helping and won't harm you with their attitude on helping. There are different types of people who drive different types of vehicles and they won't help at all, even though their education and their influence and their affluence would totally allow them to do that without a moment's feeling to their life at all. Isn't that interesting that the people of great wealth are often the most miserly about other people's lives? And the people who come out of poverty regularly are more generous than most. 